Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Community Craft. Today I am out in the middle of nowhere. Well, not exactly in the middle of the nowhere. 17 negative 1700 by negative 1700. That's not that far out there. But I am out caving because I need iron. And because this is where I got tired of watching the old Doctor Who. And by the old Doctor Who, I actually mean the old Doctor Who. Specifically, the third Doctor. Um, watching the... What was that? The No, not the Day of the Doctor. Yeah, was that, that was the episode name. The Day of the Doctor. The new episode. The one where... Oh, uh, by the way, spoiler warnings. If you haven't watched the new Doctor Who episode, that new special, um, turn turn this off. Because I'm totally going to be ruining the end of this episode for you. Um, Alright, so everybody else gone now? Good. Okay, so I was watching the new episode of Doctor Who, and that is the wrong pickaxe. But I was watching the new episode of Doctor Who, and it got me interested into watching the older Doctors, because at the very, very, very end... Oh my, nope, I'm lagging again. Okay. I've been lagging on and off. But at the very, very end of the episode, the fourth Doctor, Tom Baker, shows up. And uh, it got me interested into watching the older Doctor Whos. And I'm usually the kind of person who likes starting from the beginning. Uh, like with the first Doctor. I, I don't know his name. But the first episodes of Doctor Who are kind of, well, destroyed. <laughs> I think there's like a, a copy in, where is that? the Czech Republic or something like that. They just found recently, they found a bunch of tapes just kind of sitting there on a shelf in some TV studio somewhere. And that's that's actually pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, so they haven't filtered through. They're probably going through digital processing and all that fun crap. So it's going to be a little bit of time before we get the not-broken versions. And it's really hard for me watching the broken version. So I started with the third Doctor because, well, that's just the first Doctor that isn't completely destroyed. But anyway, so uh, watching the latest episode of Doctor Who, and there's a bunch of things that actually bother me about it. Oh, God, with the lag. Oy. Anyways, there's a bunch of things that do bother me bother me about the episode one Chris Ecklickson the now 10th doctor uh, he wasn't in it he was my favorite doctor by the way and I know he doesn't want to be cast as the doctor but uh, yeah seriously come on they barely even made mention that there was a doctor in between the 8th and the 10th doctor between John Hurt and David Tennant. Yes, uh, the new doctors I know by name, except for the last one, the the thirteenth doctor. Now, I guess he Peter was his name. I forget his name. But uh, yeah, so they had all thirteen doctors show up, and they had a pre-recorded scene of the Chris Ecclesen doctor for it. I guess he just didn't want to show up for it. Which is quite disappointing. I mean, they had, like I said, they had five doctors. They had John Hurt, new doctor. They had David Tennant, the what, 11th doctor now. Matt Smith, the 12th doctor. The... I totally forget his name. The, the new doctor, the doctor that they just announced he was in Fires of Pompeii. Um, I don't remember his name, but he's the 13th Doctor. They came straight out and said he's the 13th Doctor. But, uh, yeah, it, one, it kind of disappoints me that Chris Ecclesen wasn't there. But, you know what, if he really doesn't want to be typecast as... He, he really... I From what I understand, he just does wants nothing to do with Doctor Who anymore. Because he doesn't want to be known as the Doctor. 
that's okay. Um, apparently, he also doesn't want to be known as Destro either because he wasn't in the second G.I. Joe movie. It just kind of dawned on me when I was thinking about that. He he wasn't in the second G.I. Joe movie. At the very, very beginning, they just said, Destro, you're off the team. So he wasn't there in that entire episode or in that entire movie, which that's another thing that I have a problem with. That entire movie is a problem. Am I done with this cave already? No, okay, I'm not. Good. I was worried that I was ran out of cave. Okay, so one of the biggest, biggest problems that I have with the new episode of Doctor Who. So they go back in time and... Well... How do I explain it? It's a complicated episode. It's a good episode. I like the episode, but there's a big, big, big problem with it. And the big, big, big problem with it is at the very end... Um, like I said, I did say spoilers, right? So after they deal with... Um, the whole red alien things that I don't remember the names of... They go and they figure out that, you know, they have to activate the moment so they can end the time war. Now, we all remember this from the series, from what they've said in the series. The time war was obviously this horrible, horrible thing, and drastic measures had to be taken to the point where they destroyed the Daleks and the Time Lords because of, you know, every bad thing that was happening. Oh, I'm out of inventory space. Can you tell I've gone caving already a little bit? Yeah, okay, so. Uh, so, they're getting ready to push the button, and then all of a sudden they get this idea. Uh, the, the, the Matt Smith doctor gets this idea. Well, why don't we use that thing that conveniently showed up for the first time ever in the entire series in this episode to save the Time Lords? Why don't we put them in Time Lord art, in suspended painting, animation, whatever. And, you know, we'll just put the entire planet in there. That way everybody will think that the Time Lords are destroyed. You know, uh, what, Deus Ex Machina, I believe, is the term of it. But that way the Time Lords are saved, the Daleks are destroyed, of course... The eighth, or, yeah, the uh, ninth doctor, not the eighth doctor. The ninth doctor wouldn't know about it because he was out of sync, and he will forget. Of course, I mean, they straight up say they're changing the doctor's timeline, but yeah. <laughs> uh, um. Yeah, anyway, so the, 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 the ninth Doctor, and he is officially the Doctor. This isn't like uh, at the end of the last season where he's like, that was me who wasn't the Doctor. He, he didn't do what he did in the name of the Doctor. He did. He, he's officially the Doctor now because of the end of that episode. So he is officially the eighth or the ninth Doctor. God, I keep getting all this confused. I have to completely rethink how I think the Doctor Who series now. But he is officially the ninth Doctor, which makes uh, Matt Smith the 12th Doctor, which makes the whole fall of the 11th thing pointless. Uh, yeah, that was annoying as crap right there. But anyway, so they save the... Time Lords, they suspended animation to the Time Lords. And at the very end of the episode, Matt Smith has a brand new goal. He's going to save, find and save the Time Lords. Oh, but wait. We've gone over this. Something booped. It was on my computer. I don't think it was in the game, but... Well, I know it wasn't in the game. Minecraft doesn't boop like that. Hmm. Anyways. So, yeah, at, at the very end of David Tennant, which, for the record, that's where he was going when he left in that episode. 
he was heading off to deal with the end of his his life. Which makes sense, because if, if y'all remember when he visited the Ood, after they said, you know, he or after that episode where he's like, he will knock four times, he mentions that he got married to Queen Elizabeth I. And that's exactly what happened in that episode. So that so we know the time frame of where he shows up. Which is really cool. And but when he goes away, at the very end, he makes this whole huge moving speech towards to the master saying, We can't save the Time Lords. You don't know what they became at the end of the Time War. Okay, so this is when that episode happened, when the Time Lords were pulled out of the Time War and the entire planet materialized beside the planet Earth. That was near the end of the Time War, but it wasn't the very last possible moment of the Time War. So the Time Lords were pretty bad at that point in time. And of course, they were only getting worse because of the Time War. Well, oh, two possibilities there. I just realized something. I just realized this. That means the Master could come back. I was really hoping that. I like the Master. Anyways, uh, I hope it's the same guy, too. He was a really good actor. But, of course, you know, the Doctor can, you know, regenerate, so, of course, the Master can as well. Ugh, I'm losing my train of thought. Anyway, so, M David Tennant makes this whole huge, passionate speech about how they can't save the, the, the Master can't save the Time Lords because the Time Lords turned into this horrible, horrible thing at the end of the Time War. Yet, at the very end of the most recent episode, that's exactly what the Doctor's going to do. So what? It's perfectly okay for the Doctor to save the Time Lords, but it's not okay for the Master to save the Time Lords? Come on! That's actually quite annoying. That, that's been driving me nuts. Apparently, I just popped myself a touch. That's okay. I've got another one, and I've been mining for... I don't know, like two hours already with one Silk Touch pickaxe? They last for frackin' ever. Oh, the lag. Whoa! Bastard creeper. That was slightly unexpected. Where did he come from? He probably came from down here. Ugh. Anyways. So, yeah, I like the most recent episode of Doctor Who. It did explain a lot. It did have a lot of tie-ins. I loved how they ended it with the fourth Doctor, the, the, the Tom Baker Doctor. And it did make me want to watch more Doctor Who. So, I really like that. But, this is a big but, there are problems with it. Big, huge, chunk, and annoying problems with it. Yeah, I, I, I do kind of hate that when they do something and it pretty much negates the entire previous series. <laughs> so, yeah, the whole silence must fall when the question is asked at the fall of the 11th and all that fun crap. Well, that already happened. That was David Tennant, and that was knocked four times. Am I out of space? I'm out of space. Okay, let's get rid of some stuff. Like I said, I went caving for a while already. What don't I need? I don't need smooth stone. I definitely don't need smooth stone anymore. I've got a chest full of smooth stone. i got a chest full of cobble, too, so in case you're thinking, oh, well, maybe you should just not use the silk touch. And if you're worried that I'm wasting the silk touch, I'm totally not. I, I've got, like, two others. <laughs> Though I am a little disappointed that I kind of destroyed one of the Silk Touches because I've been repairing my Silk Touch pickaxes instead of getting new ones. But they're so easy to get, what, the way we have it set up. Yeah. Alright, well. So, yeah, if you haven't watched the new episode of Doctor Who, I'm sorry, I just totally ruined it for you. Well, not really. A lot of 
what was really cool in that episode I didn't say. Though I will say this, I was watching that episode and I'm like, who the hell is that? That is not Rose Tyler. And then they explained it. And I'm like, that makes sense, that makes perfect sense. Okay. Ah. Come on. Hey, here we go. I hate fighting water sometimes. It's so much of a pain in the ass. Well, these caves just keep going. I picked good caves. First time I tried to record this episode, I picked a cave. And I'm like, oh, this looks like a really good cave. I jumped down the cave as I was recording. And, like, it stopped. It just stopped. It went 20 blocks into the hill and it was done. I'm like, wow, that sucks. All right, let's go find another cave. Then a half an hour later, I find this cave. So I was thinking about buying the Oculus Rift. I don't know if I ever set, mentioned this on an episode or anything, but I was thinking about buying the Oculus Rift. You know, that whole fancy 3D glasses, future virtual reality kind of thing that we've been promised for, I don't know, decades if we pay attention to sci-fi shows. Uh, and the Oculus Rift is a really, really cool thing. I love the idea. I love the concept. And then I did some research on it and found out that it only, only works for things that were specifically designed for the Oculus Rift. Well, I figured it would just be a thing that, you know, it would take any HDMI signal, any uh, 3D HDMI signal, and just translate it. That way it could be used universally. I mean... How many games do you have on your PC right now? And no, I don't know who I'm talking to specifically in this situation, but it's pretty much a general kind of thing. How many PC, how many games do you have on your PC right now that are 3D? I have a ton of games that are in 3D. I have one game right now that's compatible with the Oculus Rift. So it's kind of disappointing that they decided to do it that way. Of course, now that I think about it really, really, really hard, it kind of makes sense. But either way, I decided I'm going to hang off. Since it's still in the development mode and you can only get the developer's kit for it, I'm gonna, I, I've am gonna. i decided that if I get it, I'll hang back. I'll wait for the good version. I mean, it's not like I'd be programming for it. <laughs> I'll wait for the retail version that looks cooler and uh, probably works better. And then I thought, well, now I have $300 spare that I'm not going to spend all of a sudden. Should I go get something else? And then I started looking at 3D TVs, and I'm like... I, I, I kind of want a 3D TV, but they're too expensive still. They're like, uh, whoa. I think the cheapest 3D TV that I found was like 600 bucks. I'm not dealing with the lava anymore. So, like, 600 bucks, maybe someday in the future, I don't know, but not now. Definitely not now. So, I wasn't going to deal, I'm not dealing with 3D at all, apparently. Since I'm not getting the Oculus Rift and I'm not getting the 3D TV. And then I started looking around, just poking around, and I decided, oh, well, let's do some Christmas shopping. And I did a little bit of Christmas shopping, got my sister a great present. I love, I, I, I think it's an amazing present. And I just suddenly realized that I forgot to call my mother. I was supposed to call her the other day. Hmm. Whoops. And then I went poking around on Amazon. Because, you know, that's how modern day people go shopping. We poke around on Amazon. And I decided I'll pick up a new mic 
for the record, this is not it. This is still my Logitech mic. I'm waiting for uh, it to show up in the mail. I, I I said screw it. I'm paying this much money for it. I'm just going to go El Cheapo on the shipping. And I, I went for uh, like, what, five to seven day shipping? So it'll be here sometime next week. Which isn't really a problem for me. But I, I was looking at the Blue Yeti mics. Because Adult, you you remember Adult, the guy we haven't heard from in a while. Well, okay, we have heard from him, but he, all he's ever does is play Battlefield. But, uh, yeah, he, he has a Blue Yeti. He says it's really, really good. It's designed for, you know, vocals. It's designed for music and all that fun stuff. And I figured if it's designed for, like, music, it's got to be really good for vocals. Since, you know... You require a much, much higher quality audio equipment in general for music than you do for vocals. For just talking. I mean, think about your, uh, like, a phone. The old phones are, like, what, 1100 megahertz or something like that? 1100 hertz? I forget about it. I forget. But MP3s are, like, 128 megahertz or something like that it's a lot a big difference big difference between the two so i'm like all right i'll get a blue yeti they're not that expensive they're still like you know a hundred they were like i think the one i was looking at was like 150 i'm like uh, yeah they're not that expensive they're not cheap but they're not expensive they're not like crazy expensive. Like uh, I think I, I saw mics on there for like five hundred, six hundred dollars, and it's like, no. <laughs> but uh, so I was poking around looking for th other things like a pop filter and a stand and all that fun crap. Since right now my pop filter is, uh, let's see, this is Romax, 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 Romax. I don't know, electrical cable. Like, three-prong house electrical cable that I stripped the, the grounding cable out of and wrapped it around my microphone and then hot-glued a uh, paper towel to it. <laughs> it. It works. It's one of them creative problem-solving things. But uh, I, I, I figured out how to get a real one. Let's just get a real one and get it done with. So I, I, I was looking around, and I found another Blue Yeti mic. It was apparently the, like the Big Brother version of this Blue Yeti. And it was uh, really, really, much, much higher quality. Also much, much more expensive. Like the initial prices I saw were like $300, you know, like $300, $280, $280, that kind of thing. And I'm like, eh. That's expensive. That's not going to happen. But I happened to just look at the, uh, the the multiple choices for new. Like, you know how you can click on the, you know, you, there are this many options for new, and then you can see a whole bunch of different sellers for it, and you can get them for different prices and different shipping and all that fun stuff? Well, I was looking at that. And I was looking at the prices, and it's like, yeah, 250 280 you know, $300 for this microphone. I'm thinking, nah, that's not going to happen. I'm not spending that much money for a microphone. And then I happened to look at the Amazon one, because that's what I was buying from at the time. Everything else was in the Amazon, or from Amazon Direct. And I try to get everything from the same place. That way, everything gets shipped easier and potentially cheaper. Oh, I haven't found any diamonds here yet, have I? Hmm. So, I just happened, or uh, yeah, I was looking at that, and the Amazon one said, check price in cart. And I'm thinking, nah. 
because seriously, everything else is like $280. How cheap could this thing be? Well, I looked. I, 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 but I figured, eh, it's not going to hurt anything. And I looked. And it was $180. $180 for a $300 bike. The one I was getting, the one I already knew I was getting, was a, uh, was 120 So I wasn't spending that much more for the mic. So I'm like, hmm. Okay, I may not take full use of this thing in the YouTubes. But we use, we do audio stuff for other stuff. I mean, I could have some serious fun with it. We could test out how good it is and record the bands over at the restaurant. Alright, fine. So, I'm waiting for it. Um, I didn't get a stand for it. I did get a pop filter. But I didn't get a stand for it because it doesn't look like the stand that I was looking at would work with uh, the microphone I was looking at. But yeah, so I've got I've got a brand new mic coming. So the next episode probably that I do will have the new mic and possibly good audio quality instead of this audio quality that goes in and out depending on which way my head's turned. Because apparently what I have, from what I understand, what I have right now is called a shotgun mic. At least I think that's what it is. It's not good. It's a El Cheapo $30 Logitech mic that I picked up at Best Buy because it was USB and my sound card at the time had this problem where the microphone would just be pure static. So I've... Yeah. Alrighty, well, this was a fun caving expedition. And you know what? I think I'm bored with caving. So I think I'm going to head back to... Uh, spawn type area after I finish clearing this up and just real quick I'll show you guys what we've been doing at spawn but I have to get there holy crap that's a lot of coal which is really good considering I run the smithy so I need a lot of coal Ooh, hi skelly well I will see you guys back at spawn Alright, I'm back at spawn, and doesn't look all that much different. We got a new shop. This is Cosmo's shop. Kind of out of the way a little bit, but uh, Cosmic's books. This is this is actually our an actual bookshop, so at least somebody's dealing with the books. So it's pretty cool. He's actually got it pretty decent uh, prices, too. An enchant for an iron, two enchants for two irons. You can get silk touch for five diamonds. Fortune for three diamonds. Okay, that's not a good price, but... Yeah. I don't know what... The, I, I, I don't fully know what's going on here. And then there's this brown horse that's been wandering around the spawn village for a couple of days now. Don't know where it came from. Not sure. It's tamed, but I don't know where it came from. Boing. Anybody been in here? No, nobody's been in here. I'll show you what I did to the bank. Just did a little work on the bank, not a lot. Uh, so, yeah. I know the original idea was to have curving steps, but they turned out to be far too much of a pain in the ass in such a small space. Um, and I was going to have the vault, vault back there. But, again... Not really easy to do without that much space. Uh, so I decided that I'm going to put the vault up here. It's actually going to be set in here. That's what the iron's for. The entire vault's going to be made out of iron. Because, seriously, whoever, whoever heard of a vault with a wooden back? Yeah, that wouldn't be broken into almost instantly. Granted, of course, we're talking about Minecraft. And uh, iron's... Almost as easy to get into as wood. But uh, I finally moved the uh, race car out of the barn. 
it, this whole thing started out as like, you know what, I needed a big round thing, something to join the path to the map room. So I started making this big round thing, and I thought it was really cool, and it was going to be the new spawn area. But then, I think it was West gave me an idea that I should move the, 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 the race car onto here. So I did. Spawn got moved back, and uh, yeah. And all of these redstone lamps are attached to the lighting system, so they light up at night. Is there anything else that's happened? It's spawn. I fixed uh, the smithy. There was a problem with the smithy with the uh, dropper elevator. I, I, every now and then, something would get stuck in the third dropper up. And eventually, it would add up and add up and add up. And, you know, I would have an entire stuff of, or an entire stack of stuff stuck in the dropper. Well, I fixed that. It's a little bit louder, but it's accurate. So I no longer rip off my customers, which is cool. This big round thing is the very over ambitious uh, tower that Space was going to build. But this is far too large for spawn. I mean, I have no problem with the tower idea itself. I saw a couple of. I saw his. Uh, creative world pictures of it and it looks freaking amazing but it's just too big for spawn i mean look how big this stuff is spawn is that's the biggest thing at spawn well no my barn's the biggest thing at spawn but that tower right there would just completely dwarf everything at spawn it's just too much so he's toning it down uh, let's see what else we got uh double d has been working on the ender ender so he hasn't been doing anything there. That's his fish uh, plant. I don't know what he calls it. I don't know what it is, but it's got a big giant hole in it. There's his fish, or the, the, the pier down there. That's where he just goes, sits there and fishes. Uh, let's see. Down this way is Turcote. I see a cave. I'm half tempted to go in it and start mining, but... I don't want to mine on somebody else's property. That's why I went 2,000 blocks out of the way to find a place that I hadn't been to before. Yeah, Turcotte's around here somewhere. He's in this birch forest. I think that's him right in the distance. I'm not 100%. What the crap is that? Oh, right. He did something weird. He actually marked out his territory. He was the o he's the only one that ever that actually bothered to mark out the territory. I personally don't care enough but he actually marked out the territory this is this is where his map ends so i know i'm in the right area uh let's see oh there it is that's what i was looking for his house his temporary house oh i like how he went caving went down in the ravine dug it and then pillared his way back up all righty that, uh, it works i hope he does something with the, the, the wooden fence he's creating other than just leave it like that. I hope he does something cool with it. But this is Turcotte's house. Um, I don't know about the Day Glow Pink for the windows, but outside of that, it actually looks really nice. It also looks like a creeper hit it. It wasn't me, Turcotte, I swear. I just got here. This is the second time I've ever been here, and you were here the first time I was here. But it looks actually really nice. Oh, and he's got a Tacticolor sheep farm. Hi, guys. Cool. That's all he's built, but he's only been here a couple of days. He hasn't had time to build anything uber extravagant. Uh, the only other thing that I'm really sure about is the hub. The nether hub, which West is building. Building. And I'm not 100% sure why. I guess I guess he's looking into the future. Looking farther into the future than I'm looking into the future. Because there are two nether portals. Well, I guess technically there are three nether portals in this entire world right now. There's Space's place way out there. There's the End, which is over there somewhere. And then there's Spawn. And the End isn't even that far away from Spawn. It's actually pretty close. 
but he's building it. I guess he's building it with the idea that, like, I don't know, two, three, four dozen more people are showing are going to be joining the server. Which, yes, technically, applications are still open. Uh, information will be in the details of this video. I'm going to come back here sometime and build a decent truck. Because that... That doesn't look like a truck whatsoever. I, w at first, when I th saw it, I thought it was just supposed to be like the uh, output of a, a conveyor belt type thing. Like, have you ever seen in the movies, there's this open bed truck that's parked outside of a fish market, and or the, the fish, I don't know, factory kind of place, and there's a conveyor belt and it's just pouring the fish into the truck? That's what I thought that was at first. It's not, but that's what I thought it was. Boing. Alright, so back at spawn. I don't think anything else has been done here. No, everybody else has been working on other stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't think anything really interesting is going on at spawn right now. Except my builds and... Well, I'm a little stuck on the... Uh, um, bank right now. Yeah, the bank. So this is the hub, and it's really cool, and I really hope that Wes does something about the gas that spawn in here, and I guess I have to wait for everything to render. No, it's finished rendering. Cool. Right, let's go up. Yeah, random sheep in the floor. So let's go up here. So this is, this is our spawn hub, which is really awesome looking, and really ambitious. Like, look how many different pathways he's got set up here. Unless he plans on doing something else with them, but I figure they're just pathways. Yeah, and then, and then, and then even better, down here, phone. West Hub, South Hub, and obviously East Hub and North Hub. So he's planning on expanding these to include more hubs. Holy crap! <laughs> He's thinking big! More people on the server need to think big. But this is the end pathway. I made this. I made that based off of one of the rooms in the stronghold. And of course, I built this based off of the stronghold. Like, if you recognize the chest here and random rooms that go nowhere, and then this strange, strange-ass room that I don't understand. Up you go. And, uh, yeah. So, this is what I based the roof of the hallway off of, was this room right here. I don't know, kind of like the, uh, stronghold is leaking into the nether? I don't know. And then I spent forever building this. I was originally thinking about tearing it up, making it all broken, and have the mossy bricks and stuff like that. And I have the parts for it. I have the cracked stone bricks and the mossy stone bricks. But you know what? I decided I want it to look like a clean version of the stronghold. Except, of course, for the stone behind the uh, iron bars. But yeah, I wanted it to look like a clean version of the stronghold. And I even have the lava here. The glass is over in case you accidentally walk through the portal. Hi. So in case you do this, you don't fall in and die. Because <sighs> the very first person to walk through this portal before I was I or before I was finished with it walked right into the pit that I hadn't yet filled with lava. But yeah, I think I did pretty good. So that's the or that's that's my neck of the woods. I kind of like it. I, okay, I really like it. Mostly because I made it. <laughs> and, yeah, no. The, the hub is not yet complete. I know that for a fact. This is Space's pathway. He, he put forth effort making a map kind of like we have at sp Spawn. And put it in here, which is a creative idea. That's actually a pretty neat idea. Uh, I... I don't know if this is intentional. I doubt it. 
I would lay odds that space isn't done with his tunnel yet. Especially since if you go the whole way to his tunnel and you know you can you can't really see anything until you look up. So he's got some weirdness going on here. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know if he's doing like anything. There's a down. Does it go anywhere useful? Eh, kind of. I'll have to explore that later, see if there's a decent way down, possibly a easy way to the nether fortress. That way I can get wither skulls. Whoa. Okay, so this is space's territory. I've never seen his building. It's supposed to be like epic. I don't know about all the birch wood. Eh, whatever. But let's check out Space's place. And this will be the last thing I do in this episode. Mostly because I kind of have nothing else to talk about. Oh, oh, I know what this is. I know what this is. That's not his place. That is an iron farm. Yes, Space has an iron farm. This is how he's got the iron exchange at spawn. So he's like the pawn shop at spawn. But yeah, so uh, he made... I, I, I don't know if he made it from the video I saw from Doc. I don't know how he made it. But basically what happens is a whole bunch of iron golems spawn in there. And then they die and they drop their iron in the poppies. And that's how he gets all his iron for the iron exchange. Which is cool. Because iron is extremely useful. And apparently he's got a uh, swamp around here somewhere. Because we have slimes. And I don't want to drop down there because that will just damage his farm. Let's not do that. Oh, now I'm stuck. It's kind of large bit flat, but he might be planning to expand it later, and there's a creeper back there. Don't worry, guys. I saw it. I hate it when the arrows bounce. Good lag. Alright, anybody else want to play? A couple of zombies, but nothing major. Come on, I just want to look at Space's place. Die. Die already. All of you, just die. Oh, he dropped iron. Oy. Oh, <laughs> not so automatic garage. Okay, so uh, this is Space's house. It's pretty grand. A hell of a lot bigger than my place. And yeah, he must still be working on it. I mean, there's nothing in here. <laughs> Interesting. Oh. Eh, just his storage system, that's okay. Blah, 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 blah. Alright, well, I think that does it for what I know of that we've been doing on. I, there are other people on the server and they have been building stuff, but I have no idea where they are. <laughs> I really don't. I don't know where everybody on the server is. Hell, I'm not 100% sure who all is on the server. I'd have to check the whitelist. Though, the whitelist has got to get updated here soon. i got to dump... I'm going to follow the torches. I don't know if that's the way back. But I'm going to dump the people that don't log in so I can clean up the whitelist a little bit so I can get a better idea of who all is uh, in here and who all isn't. Oh, that just goes back there. Where is the way out? Oh, there it is. Alright, so I will see you guys in the next episode, and as always, keep playing the game, and have fun.